The Stonehenge of Miami, known as Miami Circle, is a strange, significant archaeological find of tremendous age. Measuring 38 feet and cut into the limestone bedrock on a coastal spit of land surrounded by a large number of other minor holes, it is the only known evidence of a prehistoric permanent structure in the eastern United States, and considerably predates other known permanent settlements on the east coast. Quote, the developer Bauman, keen to continue construction of his condominium, offered to pay to relocate the circle to another site for preservation, an idea that Mayor Joe Carollo supported. But public opposition grew, with groups ranging from archaeologists and Native Americans to New Agers and schoolchildren protesting that the removal could potentially destroy one of the most archaeological significant finds in North America. The Elizabeth Orway Dunn Foundation made a donation of $25,000 to fund further exploration of the site, which continued until February 1999. Following issuance of building permits by the city of Miami during the last week of January 1999, the Dade Heritage Trust, Miami-Dade County's largest historical preservation organization, filed a lawsuit on January 31, 1999 seeking an injunction against further construction on the site. Trust pro bono attorney Gary Held, who filed the suit, arranged for an emergency hearing at the home of Circuit Court Judge Thomas Wilson. The basis for the lawsuit was that the developer had not obtained required approval in the form of a Certificate of Appropriateness from the City of Miami's Historic and Environmental Preservation Board. At the hearing, the developer and the city were represented by counsel. 
following arguments and Dade Heritage Trust's admission that it was not prepared to post a bond to support the injunction request. The judge denied the motion for temporary injunction. But Bauman agreed to postpone construction on the site for 30 days while the archaeologists finished their work. Meanwhile, a plan to move the circle was proposed. Joshua Billig, stonemason of Rocker Stone and Supply, was to carry out the relocation. He quit on February 14, 1999, having become convinced the circle should not be moved. Using the 30-day delay in construction which Bauman agreed to, County Mayor for Miami-Dade Alex Pinellas and others interested in saving the circle asked the county commission to file a lawsuit to take ownership of the property. The commission approved such action on the 18th of February, and Judge Richard Fetter ordered a temporary injunction against building on the site. Bauman agreed to sell, but asked for $50 million, a price which he eventually lowered to $26.7 million. Bauman made a profit of $18.2 million minus the costs. In an unprecedented move, the State of Florida Preservation 2000 Land Acquisition Program purchased the site from Bauman for that sum in November 1999. The Brickell Point site was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on February 5, 2002. End quote. It is a site, and indeed controversy, which we found highly compelling.
There are many sites in the modern world which are overlooked by mainstream academia, some due to their inexplicable nature, and others due to the controversial nature of the discoveries made during initial investigations. One such site is known as the Dover Mound, a large earthwork located in the state of Kentucky, a site which researchers have attributed to Native Americans. Now largely believed to have been a burial ground, this due to the 50 or so cremations which have been identified within the mound. Specifically attributed to a group known as the Adena people, however, one skeleton in particular located at the site escapes modern understanding. A seven-foot-tall giant skeleton of what is claimed as an Adena man was discovered. What was more interesting than his height, however, was his abnormally elongated head and disproportionately large torso in relation to his legs. This is not a unique find, however. Native American burial sites all over America have produced similar remains, yet their origins lack any logical explanation. In Ohio, for example, similar remains were found of incredibly tall men with elongated heads and disproportionately large torsos. The remains were thought to have been of extraterrestrial, but scientific investigation claims to have confirmed these are definitely human remains. Archaeologists are still continuing to find similar remains at Native American burial mounds all over the country, and indeed globally, so the possibility that these remains are instead the remnants of a once global, now lost civilization is still a topic of debate, one which has compelling supporting arguments. One additional site in particular was found in New York. An archaeological dig made in 1971 at a Native American burial ground unearthed more than 200 giant skeletons, some of which measured 9 feet in height. It was estimated at the time that the remains could have been up to 9,000 years old. Yet, predictably, the remains, although widely reported in the media, have subsequently vanished. Were these remains left by a now lost, yet once global civilization? We find their discovery all over the states, and indeed worldwide, highly compelling. Over a hundred years ago, a curious discovery was made in a town now named after this Upart, Rockwell within Texas. An ancient wall was unearthed. And although it was clearly of an artificial nature, its possible age predictably made a number of people in the academic world deny its artificial origins in favor of a far less likely scenario involving natural formation. Although magnetic exploration suggested that the rock wall had been where it lay for over 100,000 years, its origins have been heavily debated ever since its initial discovery. In 1852, farmers in Texas were digging a well when they discovered the wall. Conservative estimates have placed its creation some 100,000 years ago. Yet now, many believe it to actually be an antediluvian relic left by a now lost civilization some 200 to 400,000 years ago. Dr. John Geisman of the University of Texas, Dallas, tested the rocks as part of a History Channel documentary, giving credence to the denial of its artificial origins, suggesting they formed where they were, claiming that they were all magnetized in the same way. This tremendous age has led many to believe in modern paradigm, to deny a man-made origin, as this does to corroborate with the Bering Strait theory and currently upheld timelines in regards to evolution. However, there are others in similar fields who have found curious characteristics of the wall which do indeed suggest artificial origins. Geologist James Shelton, for example, and Harvard's architect John Lindsay have focused on its unique design features, including architectural elements, archways, lintel portals, and square doorway and window openings, which all suggest not only artificial creation, but functionality for humans, which nature would simply not create. The depth or past height of the wall is also an impressive legacy. 
the family of T.U. Wade, who moved to the area and initially made the discovery, dug to a depth of 40 feet to try and find the bottom of the wall. This excavation, however, was abandoned without finding the bottom. Years later, in 1949, Mr. Sanders of Fort Worth took up the baton and continued excavational exploration of the wall finding a number of megalithic stones at considerable depth and weighing several tons. After bringing them to the surface, mysterious pictographs were found upon them, further supporting the thesis of artificial origin. In addition, curious metal rings of modern composition were found embedded in rocks, suggesting the presence of lost technology. It would appear that the wall is indeed an antediluvian relic, one possibly submerged and subsequently buried in ancient sediment during the Great Flood. Modern studies have found that the wall is in fact six stories tall and 20 miles in length, with a number of individuals now attributing the wall to a lost civilization of giants due to its inexplicable nature. Quote, it is good when examples like Rockwall appear that test our abilities and cause us to question basic Newtonian mechanistic assumptions that have not been modified for over 150 years. Physics had to abandon this approach at the turn of the century, opting instead for relativity and quantum mechanics in order to further their understanding of matter and the universe," said James Shelton, geologist from New Orleans. It is a relic which we find highly compelling. Many thousands of written fragments of Dead Sea Scrolls have been discovered over the past century. These often represent remnants of larger texts, either damaged via natural causes or human activities the vast majority only holding a small portion of the original text. However, a small number of them were well preserved, subsequently found almost intact, with nearly a dozen of those found within the Qumran caves. Researchers have since pieced together a collection of some 981 different manuscripts, discovered from 1946 to 1956 from 11 caves. The Qumran Caves are located about one mile west of the northwest shore of the Dead Sea, from which they derive their name. Yet one scroll in particular has escaped modern translation, this due to its abnormal metallurgy. Made from nearly pure copper, it is said to contain a treasure map, leading anyone who can decipher the text and follow its instructions to a collection of enormous treasures said to be hidden within the immediate vicinity of its found location. Bronze coins found at the site corroborate the radiocarbon and paleographic dating of the scrolls, indicating that the copper scroll is thousands of years old. This is, however, this issue, halting any modern understanding of where the text suggests. The map details features on the land which would have indeed once led anyone to these treasures, yet in the modern day, these features are all but gone. According to the text, some 64 treasure hoards lay scattered across Jerusalem and the Judean desert, and is claimed to have been used to hide the most valuable treasures in the world from invaders, including a huge amount of gold and silver. Found on two rolls of copper on March 14, 1952, at the back of Cave 3 at Qumran, it was the last of 15 scrolls discovered in the cave. The corroded metal could not be unrolled by conventional means, and so the Jordanian government sent it to Manchester University's College of Technology in England for it to be cut into sections, allowing the text to be read. Professor H. Wright Baker cut the sheets into 23 strips in 1956, and it soon became clear that the rolls were part of the same document. The first transcription was made by Joseph Millick. He initially believed that it was not an actual historical account. Later, however, Millick's view changed. He now believes that the scroll was separate from the community, although it was found at Qumran in Cave 3. As a result, he suggested the copper scroll was a separate deposit. 
Could this copper scroll possibly lead to a collection of 64 unimaginable ancient treasures? Only time will tell. We find the possibility, however, highly compelling.